Ever wonder why some sublimation prints pop and others are just kind of eh? I'm going to let you in on the secret today, so buckle in and stick around. If you do stickers, water slides, print and cut, sublimation, any of it, you are not going to want to miss this, I promise. The Image Effects panel in Silhouette Studio is a powerful tool that can help you to enhance all of your images and make your end products look amazing. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette, and I hope that you're going to join our little crafting community. We would love to have you. Now, there is a lot of information to cover today, so if everyone's ready, let's do this. The first important piece of information you need to know is that the Image Effects panel is used on raster images, so think JPEGs and PNGs. A raster image is made up of pixels. Each pixel contains a specific color and is arranged in a grid to create an image. Raster images are resolution dependent, which means that the quality of the image is determined by the number of pixels per inch or dots per inch, which is DPI. The higher the DPI, the better the quality of the image. Raster images are commonly used for photographs, digital art, and web graphics. Now, on the other hand, a vector image is created using a mathematical equation geometric shapes such as lines, curves, and polygons. Vector images are resolution independent, which means that they can be scaled up or down without losing quality. Vector images are commonly used for logos, illustrations, and graphic designs. So a vector file, you want to think SVG, DFX, or Silhouette Studio files, cut files. With a vector image, you can adjust the colors in the color fill panel. But with a raster image, a JPEG or a PNG, you need to work within the image effects panel. And that's what we're going to do today. Let's open up Silhouette Studio. The image effects panel is on the right. It's a circle, half white, half black. When you click on that, you'll find a variety of options to choose from, including grayscale, colorize, Brightness, Contrast, Saturation, Gamma, Invert, Sepia, Tint, and if you're running Designer Edition or higher, you'll see the Shadow tab. Now if you click on your image, you can adjust the grayscale through the slider, through the up and down arrows, or you can type in a number and hit Enter. When the slider is all the way at zero, your image is in full color. When it is set all the way to 100, the image is in black and white. When you have your image looking just the way you want it, you want to click apply. Colorize will allow you to change the entire image. Watch what happens when I move the slider across. It goes through the entire color spectrum. You'll want to play around with this one. There's so many possibilities. In the next tab, you'll find brightness, contrast, and saturation. I feel like these are the most used. Okay, brightness can be raised or lowered, but keep in mind when you use this brightness that it will adjust the entire image equally and it may result in overexposure. So there's the brightness. Now contrast adjusts the differences in the colors. Lowering the contrast brings all of your colors closer to gray and if you're all the way over at negative 100, the entire image will be gray. When you move the slider all the way over to the right, the colors become more pronounced and the shadows are highlighted. Next you have saturation. 
Saturation adjusts the intensity of the hues. The higher the saturation, the more vibrant your colors will be. When the slider is all the way to the left, the image starts to look washed out and all of the hues get closer to white. Gamma adjusts the mid-tones in your image, which means it leaves the black and the white alone. It just adjusts the hues in between. This gives you a little more control and is useful in tracing images and editing photos. The next tab is for inversion. This will create a negative effect. Inversion will take all of the colors and change them to whatever is opposite the color wheel. It changes the dark to light and light to dark. Move on to sepia. That gives your images that vintage look. It gives it a brownish tint. Then we have tint. You can individually adjust the red, the green, and the blue with this. And again, if you are running Designer Edition or higher, you have the Shadow tab. This will apply a shadow around your image. Let me bring a different one in real quick. Okay, I have my Auto Trace on. So there are cut lines around the actual image. When we go to Send, you can see that it does not have the box around it. That's what we need for the shadow tab. First you have cut around shadow. Next you have a dynamic shadow. I'm gonna go, you can see it there a little bit. I'm going to lower the transparency so we can see it a little bit better. There we go. You can choose from dynamic shadow, which moves around as if there's an actual light source. There's fixed shadow, which just keeps the shadow in place. You can do um, the sh you can adjust the shadow offset with the X and the Y there, or you can pan the shadow. That brings up this little handle here. Grab a hold of that, and you can just move it around to wherever you want. I showed you the transparency. You can also select the color. And when you're done, if you'd like, you can release the shadow. And then it is independent of your image. Okay, now let's make this worthy of a tumbler. I'm going to start off by duplicating it so that we can see the actual difference as we go. I'm going to select our image and I'm going to start with the contrast brightness in saturation tab. First thing I'm going to do is raise the saturation and the colors will become more vibrant. And I'm going to raise the contrast as well. We're going to leave the brightness where it was at. Click apply. Now I'm going to move over to the FX tab here. That's for the gamma. Remember this one adjusts just the mid-tones. It does not mess with the black or the white. I'm going to click apply. That is a huge difference. Now let's look at the printed versions. Notice the one on the right looks a little bit washed out, whereas the one on the left is a little more vibrant. The sparkle from the glitter comes through quite a bit more 
on the one on the left. And we are going to look at the actual tumblers. But first I'd like to invite you to hit the like button. It helps me out a ton and it pushes this information out into the YouTube universe so more crafters can find it. And if you're so inclined, go ahead and hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Join our little crafting community. I try to put something new and exciting out each week. So without further ado, here are the two different tumblers. The image effect panel can really make all the difference in your print project. So the next time you have Silhouette Studio open, be sure to play around in there a little bit and get a feel for what it can do. And remember, if you make a mistake, just hit the undo button. Now, go create something amazing and I will see you in the next video.